Hello there. Happy Saturday. Uh, I am, or we are, hanging out with our family this evening. So I was going to put together my favorite uh, layer dip. And I thought, since I'm already got everything out, I might as well just turn on the camera and do this. So, anyhow, I got all the pieces put together and it should keep it fairly easy. And uh, yeah, I'll start running through it and then we'll put together our... Oh, and I'm also using moose meat because we have a moose license, so we get moose... Um, every year now and I get a lot of hamburger, no not hamburger, moose burger, like ground moose. And so that's what I use in my dip. I just take out a frozen lot of it and then in it goes. So, all right, to get started, where will I start? I'll just do my thing. Um, so in going to the party tonight, I'm bringing fried onions. So just shake some on. So when we're hanging out and doing this, what I do is I pre-fry onions, which are delicious, and then stick them in this jar, which this is always handy. Bash has shown me the advantage of using one of these little, what are they, sieve? No. Uh, colander? No? What is this? I don't know what it is. Anyhow. And then you pop them in the jar, you throw the lid on them once they've cooled, and then you have like mobile fried onions. Mm -mm -mm. And then when you're around the bonfire tonight, because tonight is Guy Fox night, or Guy Fox day, which means bonfire night. So everybody should have mobile fried onions this evening. Yeah. Um. Anyhow, so this thingy just makes it easier. I always used to just try like spooning it into the jars and then it just went everywhere. So look, all done, rinse it off. And then you have your jar of fried onions. Mm-mm-mm, here you go, look. And then I usually have a lid ready for it. It's just a recycled artichoke heart. Pop the lid on, onions to go. All right, for our mousse dip, which I don't call it a moose dip because my sister Michelle is like, stop calling it moose. It's so gross. And you know what? I did feel the same way. But moose is such a good meat. It's super lean and I don't like fatty. I don't actually like meat that looks like meat. Honestly, it's just too gross for me. And not that I'm a vegetarian because I eat burgers and obviously I eat moose meat. But it's free range and, and like... I know the person who actually shot the moose, which makes me feel good, and the moose didn't know it was coming, and up until then he was just like foraging through the woods happily, so we have happy meat, which makes it good for the dip. All right, so how I'm going to start is by, do I actually need to do this? No, here, I'll show you. So being the party girl that I am, I know that I will make one dip for the get-together, and since I got all the shit out anyways, I'm going to make a smaller dip that we save for tomorrow, and then once, you know, all the festivities are over and you're kind of like, Ugh. the last thing you want to do is cook, you just pull out your dip and you eat it yourself in the peace and quiet. Ah. Hello, Jean Greeley. Hello, Lori Brown. I friggin' loves you too. Mwah. Ah. Making a dip. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so like I said, I'm a smart party girl. Smarty girl? I don't know, it doesn't quite translate. So yeah, big one for the get together, little one for the after party on Sunday, which means like when you're just hanging out on the couch and you're, you know, Maybe a little under the weather from too much bonfire inhalation. Yeah, that's it. Not the beer. All right, so what we do first, so you get your dishes out. These are my Pampered Chef ones, so that if I decide that I want to uh, grill the top of it, because the top will be cheese, so some, sometimes I'll just like put it under the broiler and give it a quick grill so that the cheese like just relaxes enough to like Come out on your tortilla chip. 
Alright, so to start, I must make room. Got my dishes. Now do I start this first? Okay, so what I have here, it is the moose meat, the ground meat. Oh, sorry, there we go. Gotta learn my leg. And so I fried it up, it's ground mousse with fried onions, and I included lee and parons, you know, yum, good standard for, you know, like bonfire type of meat, you know, when you just want that like barbecue grilled cowboy taste. A bit of salt, there you have. And whether you use, I mean, I've used like chickpeas before rather than even meat. So you can use meat, you can use any kind of meat you like. You could use ground lamb, you could just totally veg it out as well. So, but I'm using moose meat. All right, so what we do is we have our moose meat in a bowl. And I have um, salsa. I know, like just crack the top. It's not all from scratch, folks. Sometimes you gotta like buy shit and put it in. All right, here we go. I just dumped some in. Whatever consistency I am looking for, which I don't even know what I'm looking for. Just play it by ear, dump some in. Mix it around a little bit. Because just keep in mind that the moose meat, or the meat, or the chickpeas, whatever you're using, will soak up the salsa because it's a drier product. So plop in as much as you want, and I try to make my, oh well here, screw it. <laughs> and I always like to make my dips like, mm, about um, like a day in advance. You know, like we're hanging out with the family tonight, but I like to make this in the morning, which is it still? Yes, it's only 10.30. So then it gets to sit in the fridge all day and everything kind of like mucks, bucks together and then when you're scooping it out everything's gelled and salsa is into the sauce and, oh. and then the meat has also absorbed all the, uh, all the sal salsa-ness which also makes it a little less meaty, you know, then, yeah, which is good for me because I don't really enjoy meat that tastes like meat. I'm a bit of a... A light meat eater. <laughs> Fesh is laughing at me because he knows. Yeah, if it looks like meat, I ain't eating it. Like nothing with a bone in it. I can't eat like chicken wings or anything. So, okay, so we have our salsa. So a whole container of salsa, turns out. And then I have one can of, where's my light? Oh, there it is. I have one can of corn, and I use the organic stuff, and I have one can of black beans that I've rinsed and, I guess, let strain. So, throw that in there too, might as well, right? Mix it up in advance, rather than people having to get like every single flavor with every single chip, so let's just mix it up for them. Less chewing, more partying. That's right. Oh, I have a lighting assistant. Oh, that's better. That's All right. Ooh, and then we mix this around. Is that siren in the song or is that outside? That sounded close. Yeah. So we mix all this up. So this is, like I said, um, fried moose burger and fried onions with it, you know, garlic Worcester sauce. Also with a container of salsa and then a can of corn and beans. Nom nom. And it makes a shit ton. So by adding the corn, <laughs> so by, by adding the corn and the beans, it like doubles the amount you have. It's like, you know, make enough dip for an army, why don't you? What are you saying? Hello, Gordon Shepherd. How are you? In Collingwood, right? Gotta go convince a moose to come to my place for dinner if I'm gonna make this. <laughs> Just 
talk really nice to him, bring him a glass of wine, he'll fall for it every time. That's what we do. <laughs> or a good beer, really. All right, so we've got our mousse dip. Oh, no, actually, our, our salsa part of our dip. Now, let me put this to the side. What's my next step? It's here somewhere. I know it. I know it. I know it. Gosh, where's my spinach dip? Ah! Spinach dip. Another cheater item. So we get these at Costco. So it's uh, spinach dip. You know, mayo-based, creamy, like delicious, lots of salt. You know, friggin' yum, right? And of course, I could make my own spinach dip and you know, all these wonderful organic ingredients. And that day, that Saturday, when I have the time to do that, I will. But until then, it's spinach dip from Costco. Mmm. Good. Mmm. Mmm. So, now what am I mixing with spinach dip? I thought I had my bowl out. Maybe I'm not as organized as I thought. Hold on, I need a bowl. So, what I do is take my spatula. Here we go, spinach dip. Oops, let me move this way. Good old fashioned, bought at the store, spinach dip. Cold container, throw it in there. <laughs> It'll just get thrown in your gullet later. All right, spinach dip, yum. Now here's another injection. So whenever I can inject healthy into my food, I will do it, but you know, I, I'm the type, I'm more for flavor than for health sometimes. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. <laughs> I crack you up? I oh, know I crack myself up sometimes. Anyhow, and Besh is in the background here and he's laughing as well. Anyhow, I'll just keep going. All right, so whenever I can inject healthy into my meals without the sacrifice of flavor, I'm all for it. So, I'm gonna grab this. What I made up in advance. Let me learn my lighting. Ah, oh, it's a whole thing of quinoa, which, and I use, a, we use a white quinoa as well as a red quinoa. We just blend them together and it makes this nice like harvesty color. And we make it in our miracle, what's it called? Rice cooker? Yeah, our, our miracle cooker, which I could never make rice on the stove, like especially on our gas stove because it was so hot. I just couldn't couldn't make rice properly. Anyhow, miracle cooker. Whoops. You just put all your stuff on and then, anyhow. Quinoa made. You staying? No. All right. So, oh, got to know my angles. There we go. All right. So I just take a, I don't know, miscellaneous amount. <laughs> Specifically. <laughs> okay. All right. Because I also don't want to make it too dry because the quinoa will also soak up the moisture in the spinach dip. Num num. So I just mix that up too. And I mean, you can add as many containers of spinach dip as you like. Like if you do want to make like a shit shit ton, just add another, you know, another spinach dip because at Costco they come in packages of two. So I have another one on hand if I actually want to do that, which is pretty dry. I don't know if you can see that. Gordon, flavor over health. That's my new motto. Oh no! <laughs> don't make that your motto. <laughs> I'm more of the, you know, balanced lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, so that's about it. So spinach dip with the quinoa. Now it's as easy as this. Let me move that out of the way. I usually put the creamy stuff on the bottom so I get out my hands. Here we go, where's my, oh, it's in here. Okay, that's a bottom layer. I don't know, that's pretty dry, I think. 
And I don't think we have enough. Okay, we're gonna whack another one in there. So, like I said, if you find it too dry, and you could put your quinoa in at a, you know, a lesser volume than I did. Like you could put in a little bit, see how it makes out. But anyhow, let's just go for volume. All right. So we just added another thing of Costco spinach dip. Mmm. Always handy. Actually, now I'm going to put this back in. Kind of gross, but that's okay. All right, mix it around. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me. Gordon, if it's too dry, it can be moistened with a wee dram of London Dock rum. <laughs> Works 100% of the time. God love you, man. Good, good uh, input. Yes, so anybody, you can put Screech in it. You can put London Dock in it. You can put beer in it, sure. Oh my God, some fighting Irish from the yellow belly in this. Oh. I don't know. Might be better if I just drink it. It's funny how I split it up according to the size of my dishes. So like I said, this is the party, the party dish for the family. And then this is the backup dish. I mean, I'm not gonna call it the hangover dish, but I'll call it the day after Saturday night dish. How's that? Alright, here we go. So I'll make two dips. Wow, that's a lot of dip now. I probably could have made one more and sent it home with somebody. Oh well. Sucks to be us. <laughs> yeah. So this little backup one will be good tomorrow night when we get all, you know, back in order and all that. And then we're sitting there and we want to have dinner and it'll already be done. And then we have Okay, and this is our, um, hello, Jennifer Trask, mm, who's me, my favorite, Jennifer, my vegetarian um, bestie. God love you, Jennifer, and you're holding out on the meat, honey. Nom, nom, nom. So it's ground mousse with a can of corn and beans and a container of salsa. And then we just whack this on top. And make sure you don't fill up your pan too much that uh, um, there's not enough room to like hold a good volume of cheese. Cheese is also the key element to this. Oh, and Jennifer also doesn't do dairy, so even the cheese, she does not love in this. But as we all know, and I love cooking vegetarian and vegan because it's like super delicious. So any of these items here, you can sub out for whatever you want. So yeah, you don't have to have any meat. You can just add more beans and more chickpeas and, oh my God, like tons of vegetables. There we go. Oh, screw it. Let's make it bigger. So like I said, you don't want to like overflow your your dip bowl here because then your cheese goes in it and if you decide to like grill your cheese on the top you need somewhere for it to melt into so if it's too high up it'll like bubble over it's just a big mess and I'm not into cleaning up like it's not necessary I'm too practical for that and it just slows down my ability to have fun at the party you know what I'm saying all right I think we can fit all this even after my little, don't fill it up too much thing. Whoops. Spatula. Best thing since sliced bread. So handy. All right, all right, all right. So like I said, there's some prep work for this, but it is like super worth it. 
And because I like to have fun and I like to relax, I put all the effort in the beginning. Like I said, I'll make a main dish and then I'll also make a little dish for me and Besh the next day so we don't have to do anything. We can just heat it up, broil it, whatever. Okay, now I'm going to show you my favorite part and I'm going to move these out of the way. Actually, here. Now that weighs a ton. Oh my god. Nom nom. Bye, Gordon. Oh, the red hen. Oh, have fun at the red hen. I know exactly where that is in Collingwood. Okay, say hi to everybody for me. All right, so then the next step we're going to do is move the corn out of the way. And I have my handy dandy, where are we, food processor. And I'll try to turn it on a good angle, like Vanna White that I am. All uh, right, so what we're gonna do, we need to shred cheese. So one of my favorite things I found out about my, what may look like now my retro um, food processor, but it keeps going and it never stops. Therefore I keep using it, because it's amazing. So what I've done is I take out the main blade and I put in this. There's like different attachments you can get for different things you want your food processor to do. This is like the little mini shredder blade. So I pop that in and when I discovered this, shredding cheese didn't bother me at all. The only thing afterwards is the cleanup of the item. But whatever, you shred cheese in like two seconds and who cares? Bit cleanup. Sherbesh does a lot of the dishes anyways. <laughs> Not that I make extra mess because I'm very appreciative of my dishwasher. I oh, am. Yeah. And he loves the food, so it all works out. All right, so what we do, and I've also got my little plunger thing here. Bye, Jean. Mm, I can smell your bread from here. Num, num. Bye. Thanks for hanging out. Okay, here is the... The cheese shredding, so I've already cut my Balderson cheese, the size that I know goes in this little tubey thing. And I turn my processor up at about, whatever, 7 out of 14. Turn it on, it's going to be loud, but check it out, it's like wicked. Okay, down we go. Actually, I'm going to turn it up faster. Watch this. There's one. Shredding cheese, the best way I've ever done in my life. Oh, make sure you don't roast your motor. Because <laughs> what happens is, so it kind of gets a little bunged up in there, but if you just like do a reasonable amount. Hold on, where's my, oh yeah. And so the other thing I do is, if I'm gonna shred up cheese, <laughs> if I'm gonna shred up cheese, I might as well shred up a shit ton of it and then just keep it in the fridge for us throughout the week and you can just like sprinkle it on stuff, you know, in moderation because you don't want to be eating too much cheese. Oh, I love cheese. So I have these containers that I put them in. Wow, I got a lot of junk on the go here. But here, I'll show you what the cheese looks like. Hold on, that's a solid piece. So yum, I have to eat this. Mm -mm. Look, shredded like that. Lori Brown, get one. Like, even if you just shred cheese in it, it's worth it. But it does like everything else, everything, everything. Put it in here. Oh. That demo worked out nicely. That could have gone everywhere. I've had cheese avalanches and they just fall all over the place. I know. Trust me, no cheese was wasted in the making of any of my dishes. I'm going to just pop it back on again and then I have one more chunk. So like I said, oh yeah, the other thing I do is this kind of gets bunged up too on the blades. 
So I'll just kind of pick them out with this. Um, oh, did you know that the, I learned this from Besha's granny, is the best way to cut cheese is with a serrated knife. Thank me later and like thank Besha's granny. So Gouda, Beshera, saw her using serrated bread knife to cut cheese like a samurai. Anyhow, get one. If you don't already have one or if you never use it, take it out and cut your cheese. It's the bomb. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, enough stabbing of the audience. Jam it back on. Gently and lovingly. Pull out some of these solid pieces here. Back on again. Turn it on. Last chunk of cheese. And even for one more chunk, it's worth it to clean it out and then re and then do the last piece. cheese. I just take out the solid piece that doesn't actually go all the way through. That is not wasted as well, my friend, either. Okay, then move this stuff out of the way. And then we've got another load of shredded cheese within seconds. Oh, and shredding by hand does suck. You are right, Lori Brown. You were always a practical woman. That's why I like you. Yeah, it sucks. And how many times have we like shredded the knuckles off of ourselves? God help me. And then I'm just like angry after that. And you gotta like use a band-aid and anyhow. This food processor only cost me like I can't even remember. My sister got it for me for Christmas a few years ago, and it's only like like maybe you'd spend 50 bucks, but it just does everything. Okay, so now we have our cheese done. Did my thingy move? Oh, there we go. All right, I was wondering why I was leaning over so far. It's like, ooh. Okay, so where were we? We've got our almost finished layer dip. And like I said, there's a bit of prep work, but then, man, you are like styling after that. So we have our shredded cheese. Now there's no mystery happening here. <laughs> and as I said earlier, this is my backup dip. This is the main dip for hanging out with the family tonight. But this is the backup dip for Sunday when you don't want to cook. And it'll just be there in the fridge. I'll practically have forgotten about it. Then it'll be like... <gasps> What are we gonna eat? We we'll eat the dip. Yeah. Since you're gonna go through all this trouble anyways and get all this shit out and all those ingredients and I don't know, I let, I'm the type, the less work, the better for max amount of fun. That's my, definitely my life motto. Now on top of this, you could put um, a sprinkle of anything really. You could put like hot chili powder. I try to keep it kind of social in case the kids want to get into it. That's why my sister also doesn't like me calling it a moose dip. Even mom's like, why do you have to call it that? I'm like, but that's what it is. I think moose is a, is a like a privilege like the best meat in the world therefore we should love it but I mean we didn't like in my family we didn't eat moose like ever we only started eating moose when we moved back here in 2009 and then Besh um, and our friend Samantha have a joint moose license ticket and so we've been in on a you know free range happy moose now for a few years, and then I realize, you know, like, they're the happiest animals ever out there, so it's good meat, and it's super lean, like, super lean. I've cooked with all kinds of meats over the years, but moose is, like, 
it's a it's a lovely meat. Very dry. You have to like add. I add a lot of coconut oil and stuff when I when I use it because it doesn't have a lot of moisture of its own. So I gotta add it. <laughs> that's my only complaint, and really, it's not a complaint. Anyhow, so that's it. These are my layer favorite party layer mousse dip. Nom nom nom. Pretty good, hey? So this is the backup the hangover dip that we make for ourselves. And then this is the family hangout dip. Oh my god, it weighs like 12 pounds. But really delicious. And like I said, like when just before the party, if you're somewhere where you can broil it, um, just pop it under the broiler, but don't let it stay in there too long because the spinach dip actually turns to like olive oil, I guess the mayonnaise relaxes too much. So I just broil it so that the cheese is hot and then like pull it out right away. So get it like nice and hot and then let's jam it under, broil, pull, serve with tortilla chips mm, and lots of them. Preferably salted because that's the best. All right, thanks for hanging out. And for recipes and stuff like that, I should say that you can join my piece of pie email list. I know this kind of sounds silly, but I do actually send out an email and I put this stuff in there and, you know, sometimes I do recipes and when I can get my shit together, you know, take a few pictures and a bit of how to. So join my email list. Just go to my top of my Facebook page there. I think there's like a, a sign up button. So Feel free to do that, and otherwise, I hope you have a great bonfire night. Boom, boom, boom. Go Guy Fox, the rebel in us all. Okay. Bye, everybody. Happy Saturday. Psh.